What's going on guys, it's Eric. How are you doing today? Today we're gonna look at some photos that I took on both digital and film cameras, and uh, I guess we'll compare them. So if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that uh, I guess over the last year or so, I have talked a lot about, I was gonna say a lot of Pentax cameras, but really two Pentax cameras. The Pentax 645 and the Pentax 67. These are both medium format film cameras. They both shoot 120 film. This in a six by four five format and this in a six by seven format. The names are a hint. I made videos about both of these cameras. Um, I'll link to them somewhere. Maybe it'll appear on the screen. Maybe it'll be down below. Who knows? I guess we'll, we'll take this journey together and find out. In addition, I made a video a few months ago about failing and learning to grow from failure and failing as a photographer. And in that video, I mentioned that about a year ago, I had gone out to shoot uh, a video where I was gonna do digital, six by seven and six by four or five images and compare all of them for a bunch of reasons that are detailed at length in the video. It didn't work out, right? However, uh, about a week ago, I went out and, and retried the whole thing. So good and bad, the good pictures turned out. We're gonna look at them. The bad, I don't rec really record any video while I was out there. I, actually, the, the woman I was taking photos of the model at the end, she said, uh, you know, did you get enough video for your YouTube channel? And I was like, no, I didn't get any video for my YouTube channel, but it was pretty cold. We were kind of figuring it out and going, if we shoot again, we'll definitely do some YouTube content and you guys will share in the experience. But we do have the photos. So what I would like to do is show you the photos that I took six by four, five, six by seven, and of course digital that I cannot show you because it's recording this video right now, but it's a, a Sony a7 III mirrorless full frame camera. In addition, I used two different film stocks. I used Portra 400 and Portra 800. Not a huge difference, but I think it will be fun to explore the difference between digital and film, between a smaller medium format uh, style and a larger medium format style, and between a 400 speed color negative film and an 800 speed color negative film. I hope that sounds like a fun video to you guys. I had a lot of fun taking these pictures. Uh, I had fun scanning them. Uh, normally my routine is to, to crack open a six pack and start scanning, but I'm, I'm, I'm toning down the, uh, the old alcoholic beverages in the interest of physical fitness. So uh, I didn't do it this time. I drank a protein shake and some LaCroix sparkling water, but it was, it was still a great time. So let's go look at some photographs and we'll meet back here and discuss what we learned together. And I'm a, these, these cameras are actually heavier than you think and I'm starting to get tired and a little bit sweaty. So I'm gonna set them down here. All right, so let's take a look at three images and you tell me if you know which is which. So one of these was taken with a Pentax 645, uh, one was taken with a Pentax 67, and one was taken with a Sony a7 III. All right, so I think this one is kind of easy. So this is the digital image. This was taken with the Sony a7 III. Let's take this out of the mix. Now, can you tell me which of these is the 6x4, 5 image and which is the 6x7 image? How about now? Which is which? So this photo shoot didn't go as smoothly as I had hoped it would, but you know, they never do. I think I came away with enough usable images to offer some conclusions here. The first is that I really prefer Portra 400 to Portra 800. These are some of the first photographs I've taken on Portra 800, at least in medium format. And I, I come away thinking that, especially because I didn't need the extra speed in this situation, you just lose some of the, the dynamic quality that Portra 400 offers. The images don't pop, they don't feel three-dimensional in the same way. When I look at the 6x4, 5 photograph that I have here that was taken on Portra 400 versus the Portra 800 images, I'm just blown away by how much crisper and more vibrant it feels. So given the choice, I think I would always go with 400 or, you know, 160 if the conditions allow going forward. My second conclusion is that 16 photographs is a lot more than 9 or 10, so you definitely get a lot more out of a single roll of film on a 645 camera than you do uh, on a 6x7 camera. I, I think I knew this like 
intrinsically, but it becomes really obvious when you're shooting them back to back and you have to really dial in on every photograph with the 6.7 because you're so concerned about losing one of your, <laughs> one of your precious shots. I also think that the extra resolution offered by the 6x7 makes a huge difference. I think that if I were doing portraits in the future, I would either shoot exclusively 6x7 or, or possibly try and split the difference with like a Hasselblad and shoot 6x6. That could offer, you know, a few more exposures per roll and a slightly lighter and easier to handle camera while still offering that increased uh, resolution that you get out of a bigger film format. That being said, I very much like the look of these photographs. I think the digital photographs are, are beautiful, like really, really beautiful. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of that 85 millimeter Sony lens. I think it takes gorgeous, gorgeous pictures, especially for its you know, relatively affordable price. But uh, I think the Pentax 6.7 images are right there with it. Now, right off the bat, I just want to point out that I struggled like crazy to color balance these things. I tried to make the film photographs internally consistent uh, as much as I could with their color balance, especially given that I was switching back and forth between cameras, overexposing the images intentionally, and shooting with two different film stocks, uh, the 400 and the 800. And they vary a little bit, but I think I got them pretty close uh, in Photoshop. Uh, but they look very different from the digital images. The uh, modeling question, she goes by Max Melancholy online. I'll link to all of her stuff down below so you can uh, uh, follow her and, and see what she's up to. But she said that she thought that the film had just a really interesting, cool look. And I think that's partially uh, a result of, you know, people not being used to seeing film images. Um, but it's also, some of them turned out really nice. I'm really pleased with the way the 6.7 images turned out. Less so with the 6.45 images, though, I think that uh, had I shot them all on Portrait 400, I probably would be happier with them. And I think this is what's so interesting about, you know, film photography, photography in general, is exploring these different paths, going down these different paths, seeing where they lead, seeing what they offer, you know, what the positives and the negatives are, and, and taking all of these things and kind of adding them to your skill set, adding them to your experience, and, and going forward from there. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. So I really had fun taking these photos, and, and looking at them again is, is really exciting and cool. Um, I'm going to be doing more stuff like this. Hopefully, we will be able to record this in the future, so you'll see me in the act of actually taking the photographs. But, you know, I have some stuff lined up once we're able to leave our homes again, you know, get back to normalcy. So uh, stick with me, you'll see more. And I'm, I'm really anxious to hear what you guys think. So there you go, 6x45, 6x7, digital. Uh, what do you guys think? What was your favorites? Uh, do you have any other formats or film stocks you'd like to see me try out? I'm, I'm interested in hearing from you. Leave me a comment in my web zone. If you're new to the channel, you know, I hope you stick around, check out some of the other stuff I've done. I do a lot of film photography, gear. I do some narrative videos that I, I think are pretty fun. So check it out. Maybe you'll find something you like. Uh, if you did like this video, please leave me a like. Uh, if you want, subscribe. Um, and if you really liked it and you wanna help me buy film, develop the film, et cetera, et cetera, consider tossing a buck a video my way on my Patreon. I haven't uh, charged anything to my patrons in forever, so who knows if I even have any left, but uh, if you're still there, I'll probably pop this one up there. It just helps me kind of pay for film, pay for developing costs and, and keep this whole thing going, subsidize a little bit of the cost I dump into this channel. So really appreciate it if you would consider that. That's all I got guys, uh, stay safe. I know things are going a little bananas right now. If you're watching this in the future and things are not going crazy, then just ignore this. But uh, you know, use common sense, uh, take care of yourselves guys, and uh, I'll see you sooner than you think. Thanks so much, bye.